It has a lot of force to work its way through debris and grime. Also, the tolerances inside the gun are very loose. So if there's a lot of debris inside the weapon, generally it does not affect functioning. Okay, we're gonna do a little full auto fire. Blood, guts, and dirt are the enemy of the internal workings of any gun. Can Kalashnikov's killer continue to get deadly with a gut full of grime? The myth out there is that this gun will shoot with a pound of dirt in it. It will not fire with pounds of dirt in it. It will fire with mud in it, snow, water. It'll still fire. We're going to put a little dirt in it. Okay? And we're going to test it and see if this weapon shoots. When Russia's Red Army roars, Spetsnaz are their lethal spearhead. The cornerstone of their firepower, the Kalashnikov AK-47. This mass-produced legend became the granddaddy of the AK series of assault rifles. A firm favorite with all Russian special operations units. Any areas where it's going to be hard on men, it's also going to be real hard on equipment. So a weapon like this uh, that can take a phenomenal amount of abuse and continue to work uh, is a big attribute. I've seen weapons that have been in the field for three, four months straight without one cleaning and function to the extent of five, six loaded magazines on full order one after another to the point where wooden hand guards would start smoking from the heat. Regarded as basic by today's standards, at the time of its genesis, it was a weapon that was way ahead of its time. Developed by Russian tank sergeant Mikhail Kalashnikov in 1947, here was a weapon that would soon become a legend. Kalashnikov had looked at some German technology and produced this robust, fully automatic, infantry assault rifle, which not only equipped the Russian army, but then went on to equip insurgents across most of the world. The idea of an assault rifle was revolutionary and would shape the face of the global battlefield. Just three years earlier, the German Sturmgewehr had unleashed a tsunami of lead against the Allies during World War II. This particular weapon is the granddaddy of the AK and the M16 and all the assault rifles that are in service around the world. In my opinion, the most significant small arm fielded in the 20th century. Kalashnikov's take on the Sturmgewehr would take the high rate of fire of submachine guns like the Papashov and combine it with a more accurate bullet similar to that used by rifles like the Mosin Nagant. His genius, a weapon that over 60 years later still remains beloved by Mother Russia's best soldiers. If I met Mikhail Kalashnikov, uh, I would definitely buy him a number of shots of vodka for the design that he put together and for the reliability that we, we come to expect and for the most part always received from his design. From the caves of Afghanistan, and the urban combat around Grozny and Chechnya. Spetsnaz choose to get locked and loaded with their Kalashnikovs. Generally speaking, you pull the trigger, if this thing's loaded, it's gonna run for you. Firing 600 rounds per minute and effective to 300 yards, the AK-47 performs no matter how much blood and guts there is on the battlefield. I uh, heard a story from an ex-Green Beret. Him and his team stumbled across a dead body that decomposed into an AK that was under him. And the person must have been there for weeks, maybe a month or two. When they turned the body over and discovered the AK, all the innards and everything just went through the weapon. And he picked up the weapon, chambered around, and the weapon fired perfectly. But sometimes even the AK has the bare-faced cheek to run out of ammunition. Yep, I got more ammunition, so... Not a problem for a Spetsnaz operative who is trained to keep the AK's deadly barrel pointing towards the enemy. 
even when it's running on empty. This being a K, being very reliable weapon, if you do have a situation where it goes click instead of bang, you can obviously right away go into changing the magazine and continuing from there. Unfortunately, very often in the battle, you're not going to have the luxury of doing the tactical reload quickly because you're in the open and your enemies are still engaging you. At that point, you cradle your primary weapon, still keeping the threat through the barrel towards the adversary. At that point, you extract the secondary weapon and present another weapon, which takes place of the primary, and primary goes into a slinger position, and you keep engaging with the secondary weapon. Russian weapons are, are known for their durability. They were designed for conscript troops, for third world guerrillas, so they're famous for operating under just abysmal conditions. One weapon would be as simple and deadly as they come. Mikhail Kalashnikov's AK-47 assault rifle is at the heart of Spetsnaz's weaponological family tree. Designed over 60 years ago, amazingly, it still forms the template for some of the deadliest weapons in today's Spetsnaz arsenal. Rewind to the 1970s. At the height of the Cold War, Soviet weapons designers would keep an eye on developments on the other side of the Iron Curtain to stay in the running during the arms race. They soon saw the deadly potential of the 5.56 millimeter caliber bullet being used by the American M16 rifle, which had fast become the main man in Vietnam. The Russians studied the M16 and the 5.56 round and decided to evolve their next AK series rifle into a rifle that fires a smaller cartridge. Once these smaller caliber bullets hit an enemy soldier, they were more likely to flip and tumble instead of passing straight through, tearing flesh and inflicting lethal damage. The sort of damage that could win battles. Russian designers wanted to marry off the deadly potential of a smaller 5.45 millimeter bullet to Kalashnikov's AK-47 designs. Step forward, the new and improved AK-74. Up until that point, the AK series of rifles had fired a larger 7.62 millimeter caliber bullet. The Russians evolved from the AK-47 and the 7.62 by 39 to the 5.45 AK-74, which is the standard and has been the standard in their army ever since. Notice, however, roughly the overall length is the same. That was critical for the Russians because it allowed them to essentially adapt the AK series of rifles to this new caliber without having to redesign the weapon internally dramatically. The AK-74's new 5.45 millimeter round would soon earn the nickname the Poison Bullet. It was small, but deadly. Weaponology investigates. First up, the push-through power of the AK-47's heavier 7.62 millimeter round. Here we go, going hot. Bullet strike, obviously right about right here. Actually separated the block. Second up, the slow, tumble and shred deadliness of the AK-74's 5.45 millimeter bullet. Okay, going hot. Okay, as you can see, the bullet entered here and actually impacted on the inside, did not penetrate through. Dramatic difference in the performance on a hardened object like cinder block or any other object along those lines. It might not look impressive, but the fact that the 5.45 millimeter bullet could not penetrate the block means increased battlefield effectiveness. While the AK-47's heavier 7.62 millimeter round would simply fly through a target, the AK-74's poison bullet tumbles base first upon impact, slowing and creating enormous damage to any enemy soldier. 545 is meant for incapacitating people 
not for penetrating through objects.